Okay. There is no right to breathe. There are rights that pertain to physical integrity. There are local regulations on whether or not to wear masks during a global pandemic. There are national and international regulations on certain pollutants and emissions. There are important proposals for strong international environmental uh, legal frameworks, such as the Global Pact for the Environment. And all of that is important. All of that, more or less directly, aims to protect vital respiratory processes and life-sustaining gas exchanges. Yet, and it, it is crucial to realize that there is no right to breathe or, or draft thereof. And, this, and that this absence is not a formality. It affects the earth and its processes. It affects billions of people around the globe. And considering certain cons uh, conversations about outer space governance, also beyond the globe. Greenhouse emissions are thinning the ozone layer. The COVID-19 pandemic has already caused more than 4 million deaths around the globe. And up above the globe, 91% of the world's population breathe air that exceeds the WHO guideline limits, with air pollution killing 7 million people each year, disproportionately affecting middle and low income households. Thousands of migrants are left to drown in the Mediterranean Sea. Lungs are filling up with water. While environmental refugees, rapidly expanding in numbers and across borders, are literally out of breath. And speaking of being out of breath, police violence in the US and in other countries continues to asphyxiate racialized bodies. Radiation exposure, Amazon deforestation, ocean deoxygenation, the list goes on and on and on, expressing ever more precarious states of existence on Earth and calling for a right to breathe that can attend to the injustices of our time. Neither adding a clause to a national legal code or fixing the language of a human rights treaty can sufficiently address this challenge. The work, the work of establishing a right to breathe, has to start somewhere else, namely with the very question what breathing means and for whom in our complexly entangled world. And also with ever more global actors and technologies redefining traditional, traditional concepts of normativity, we also have to ask where and what law is in the 21st century. This is hard work. It requires not only thinking outside the box, but sustainable and effective collaborations across many different fields, places, and sectors. Such collaborations enable a novel and effective approach to knowledge production and problem solving. As the first organization of its kind, the Logische Fantasie Lab offers both. Its commitment to decentralizing knowledge production guides the lab's investment in the innovation of research methodologies and its development of effective formats for collaboration and actionability. Under the leadership of my fellow co-directors, Patricia J. Williams and Suleika Ayub, who is here with us today and is responsible for the visual language here. So under the leadership of my fellow co-directors co -directors, and with a dedicated team of more than 20 researchers trained in over 16 different disciplines, the lab is currently conducting three different investigations, tapping into a vast established network of institutions, non-profits and affiliates spanning dozens of fields and universities. The investigations differ in terms of their foci and problems each being uniquely addressed by the team in charge and guided by the lab's metaphorical method, which decentralizes knowledge production while facilitating, facilitating inventive collaborations. All right. 
So using the lab's method and resources, the gas exchanges and the right to breathe investigation is actively working towards a right to breathe. It develops hitherto unprecedented tools and methods for identifying unrecognized breathing injustices, for addressing the limitations of national and international lawmaking, and for ethically engaging in solution-oriented normative design processes. The investigation was conducted over two years by young researchers from Princeton, Harvard, Columbia, Oxford universities, as well as the University of Applied Arts in Vienna, UC Santa Cruz, Sorbon Paris, and the London School of Economics. To train students and researchers in the metaphorical method and to further facilitate cross-disciplinary knowledge production, the gas exchanges and the right to breathe investigation was taught in seminars uh, at universities, including the Angewandte uh, last year, and also in addition to those hosted by the Lofi Lab uh, itself. Let me turn over to them for a few minutes uh, with this short uh, video clip. metaphorical method is best able to speak to. Radioactive colonialism permeates all of these scales and matters, from cellular through to the planetary. You know, these rights are often articulated in the abstract. Law is not something that's immaterial. Um, it combines with the temperature in the atmosphere and it, you know, it swirls along with all the other smoke and smog and dust and aerosols that are in the atmosphere. Air is not one, it, it's multiple. So when we think about constructing something like a right to breathe, this research does show that breathing is not universal. We know that radiation and the way it moves in the wind and in our atmosphere and its half-lives obey no geographical borders or thinkable timescales. We have to ask whether law can attend to these different forms of existence and how the scales of nuclear colonialism render life livable or unlivable. Being, breathing, and knowing um, are entangled. The challenge for me was that law does not register different pressures that act upon different bodies. So you have race and racism that constantly intra-act with the entanglement of pressures. And no body is independent for these, from these pressures. So for Black bodies like Barbara Dawson and George Floyd, you have the medical and societal pressures that are acting on their bodies because of race and because of systemic racism. So a way for me to understand this force field of violence um, coherently and concretely was by asking how can we understand the relationship between law and force while also um, looking at matter and meaning together. I think the metaphorical method was really important for my project. It helped me really break down multiple entanglements that are in within this apparatus of police violence. So for example, the breakdown of physical and social forces, lethal bodily reactions, and objective reasonableness. You know, attending to the fact that when we think about rights and we think about law, you know, these rights are often articulated in the abstract and divorced from the actual mechanical processes that are taking place. And it's important then to make whatever laws that we have physically and materially rigorous, because so long as breathing exists only in the abstract, you can't defend it, you can't protect it. There are violences that are ongoing, which are not being discussed. I mean, there are protections in prisons against indoor smoking, protections against secondhand smoke, and there are no protections for 
a potentially deadly virus like COVID. Using a um, metaphorical approach shows the absences that, that carry down and now are reflected as well um, in absences in legal practice. That's the difficulty in addressing these questions and addressing the legal framework and scientific framework is how do you present a rigorous argument for something that cannot be described right now, but also thinking of how it can attend to questions that are not articulated yet, are not formed yet, cannot be represented yet. And it's been very fruitful to collaborate. And I think ultimately has really, has been a style of research that I had been unfamiliar with before. And I think ultimately is, is, is what I believe to sort of be a way that I want to operate and continue to work in the future. of the investigation, the identification of specific unrecognized breathing injustices and the shortcomings of the legal frameworks have informed the lab's approach towards the conception of a right to breathe and the modalities that can make it happen. So how to construct a right to breathe in times of climate change and rapid technological developments whose protective range far exceeds the individual yet includes it. So neatly packed uh, in one sentence, the challenge might sound pretty straightforward. Unfortunately, it is not. First of all, how to create a new kind of right or even legal framework. We tend to think of parliaments and courtrooms as the sites of lawmaking. And we think of states and state actors as those exerting normativity. Yet, this narrow conception of law does not fully hold anymore. And it is hindering our ability to develop responses to the injustices we are so acutely aware of. Platforms and private actors, as we heard today already, are important players in normative global processes. And in addition to shifting the very conditions of knowledge production, Technological developments play a major role in determining present and future forms of law and governance. Decentralized ledger technologies such as blockchain are shifting commercial and property law. Algorithmic computing and machine learning are remodeling legal practice. Remote sensing technologies are increasingly informing international treaties and quantum tech will have significant impact on global and national security law, among many other fields of law. So taking into consideration the results of our research, the participatory forms of normativity, the various actors involved, and the significance of technology, the task for us is to create a platform that brings together private and public stakeholders and mobilize new technological tools to build a right to breathe that can stand the pressures and demands of our time. And this is how we're going to do it. Combining innovative methods from tech and startup spaces with established and rigorous academic and scientific research, the Lexaton is a wholly unprecedented event form of real-time collaborative solution design. As with all hackathons, it is a mechanism that enables the development of solutions that are based on technological tools. However, where classical hackathons, even legal hackathons, seek the production of software or prototypes, the Lexaton goes further. It provides the platform to bring together a diverse group of stakeholders and makes use of the potential of new technologies to address injustices identified from these fields. The important difference between this format and the traditional fora for redressing injustices and grievances is that the Lexaton is not solely about policy making that could eventually turn into a right to breathe. Rather, it seeks to collaboratively engage solution-oriented normative design processes, which then cumulatively create a right to breathe. In doing so, the Lexaton establishes the capacity for leveraging the skills and the creativity of a wide range of invested stakeholders from 
from, for example, governmental and non-governmental agency working start the improvement of air quality to blockchain startups proposing decarbonization through token economics, or from downwinder activists in New Mexico to biomedical engineers manufacturing breathing devices, or as we heard, sensors, from universities to international courts, from policymakers to medical doctors. So concretely, the Lexathon in its first iteration will consist of an intensive four-day in-person event in 2023, preceded by specific de problem development workshops hosted on a virtual co-working platform. Currently, we are in the process of securing participating stakeholders with a target aim of 50 participants in total, and we are still welcoming proposals for collaboration. With that, and in the name of the Logische Fantasy Lab, I want to thank you for your attention. I want to thank Osta and the team for inviting me. And, um, and I want to encourage you to reach out to us. If you want to know more about the Logische Fantasy Lab, or even more importantly, if you're interested in working together towards a right to breathe, because there should be a right to breathe. Thank you. <laughs>